First, go ahead and launch Unreal Engine 5.4 Preview 1. Then go to Games. We're going to be using a blank project and then give your project a name. When Unreal Engine starts, on the top right, click on Settings and then Plugins. In the search bar above here, type Motion and there'll be a plugin called Motion Design. Click on this checkbox to enable it, click Yes and then restart Unreal Engine. Once Unreal Engine restarts, we're going to create an empty level. So File, New Level, choose Empty Level and then Create. Inside your empty level, we're going to enter Motion Design Mode and then choose Create Defaults. This will give you some actors to get started with. Click on Spawn here and then click on the Save icon to save our map. So I'm going to make a new folder called Maps and inside this folder, we're just going to give our level a name. So in my case, Scan Commercial. Click on Save and then you're good to go. In the bottom right, click on Content Draw, right click and then choose New Folder. We're going to call this Meshes. Inside this new folder, right click and import the meshes we've given to you. Now we've given you a CAN mesh and a Infinity Wall mesh. You'll find the locations uh, to both these meshes in the description of this video. So just download those meshes and then drag and drop them into the content browser like this. Drag and drop them here. For the CAN mesh, make sure the combined meshes is checked because it has two pieces. And for the infinity wall, you don't have to worry about this. So just drag and drop that into the meshes folder and then click import all. Once you've got both your meshes, you want to go ahead and set up your materials. Now, once again, we've given you some textures for the Reality Forge Cola or soda. So make a new folder, call it textures. And then inside this folder, just drag and drop the textures we've provided for you. Okay, so just drag and drop it into this folder. Unreal will automatically detect what texture is what. Then you want to go back to your meshes and double click on the M soda can. When the editor opens up, delete this note and then drag and drop the textures we provided. This will go into your base color. Your normal texture will go into your normal output. And then this pack texture has a different texture on each channel. So the red is ambient occlusion, the green is roughness and the blue is metallic. Once this is done, just like I've shown here, Click on apply and then save. You can double click on your can mesh to open the static mesh editor just to check that all the textures are working as intended. 140 calories. Hmm. Wonder what this tastes like. Next, we're going to make a new folder and call this materials. Inside this folder, you're going to right click and choose material and call this M underscore wall. Double click to open the editor and we're just going to set the base color to 0.8 on the vibrance. Click OK, click apply and then save. Next, you're going to open the static mesh for the wall by double clicking on it and then assigning the material we just created as the default material, this M wall material here. Right, so we have this nice white infinity wall. Once again, apply and save and then close. Next, we're going to create our emissive master. So right click, choose material and name it M underscore emissive. Then double click to open the editor. I'm going to put down a constant three and a constant one and multiply them together so I can control how much emission is coming out from this material. And then I'm also going to change the shading model to unlit. Then we we'll plug the result of this multiplication to the emissive color and then set up some default values. So just white for the emissive color and one on the emissive multiplier. We're also going to convert these to parameters. So right click and choose convert to parameter like this and name the color emissive color and the multiplier emissive multiplier. This is going to come in handy when we make instances of this master material. Now to make an instance, you're going to right click on your master and choose create material instance. I'm going to name this M underscore emissive underscore yellow. This is going to be our yellow emissive material. Now because this is a material instance, when you double click on it, you only get access to the parameters we created earlier. So in our case, I'm going to override the color and set this to like an orange. Then I'm going to go ahead and quickly make some more instances. So we can just go ahead and press Control D on our existing yellow instance. And I'll name this M underscore emissive blue. Double click once again. You can see this is a really fast pipeline, right? So it's just changing those parameters. And once again, I'm going to Control D and create a white emissive instance, right? So M underscore emissive white. Double click. And for this one, I'm just going to take the saturation all the way down to zero. That way we've got a white, a blue, and a yellow. Kind of like a teal orange uh, that you see a lot in motion graphics. Next, unfold default scene and unlock the camera. This is going to let you use that typical Unreal Engine navigation. All right, with that done, let's go ahead and put down our infinity wall. We're going to go ahead, click on details, and reset its position to 
kind of the zero of this uh, environment here. We're going to go ahead and delete the skylight and the post process volume because we're going to add these in later. So let's go to an unlit shading mode so we can see things because there is no lighting now. And I'm just gonna save everything because Unreal does get unstable, especially this is a preview build, right? So now let's go ahead and add a soda can. And it looks, everything looks a little large, this infinity wall. So we're just gonna scale this down to 0.37. Make sure the lock is on so that it scales uniformly, okay? That looks a lot better. Now with that done, I'm gonna go ahead and add two planes, one on the left and one on the right. You know, if you've ever done um, uh, or seen a softbox uh, for product photography, uh, this is kind of what we're trying to emulate here. So I'm just putting it on a plane. I've scaled it up to two and I'm just gonna position it roughly over here. Let's go back into lit. Now, the second we add that emissive texture, we're gonna use the blue one here. So I'm just gonna go for my emissive blue, drag and drop it on this, and you'll start seeing, you know, Lumen doing all the work here. We're getting this amazing look and feel here. I'm gonna alt and drag, make a copy of this, rotate it, and we'll use uh, the orange emissive texture on this one. And so we get that teal orange uh, look here. We're also going to alt and drag and make kind of a, a light above here, put the white emissive on this. And I'm just going to scale this up on the Y a little bit more because it looks looks a little narrow. So we'll go with 0.45. Let's put this back to two and then 0.45 here. Like so. For our camera, I'm going to click on this Ava Cine Camera Actor and just change its rotation to 0, 0, negative 180. We're also going to reset its position, pull it down a little bit and pull it back a little bit. Click on camera and then choose the name of the camera to look through this camera. Now I'm just gonna dial in these numbers. And if you're having trouble getting it in the center, you can go to the cinematic viewport. It has a ton of great guides here. You will have to go back into your camera and you'll see now because I've used the crosshair, it becomes really easy to position this dead center. So, all right, so we're gonna save this. We're also gonna set a bookmark in case I move my camera. So if I move my camera, I can just wherever I am, hit zero on the keyboard and I'll go back to bookmark zero. I'm gonna change the lens to a 50 millimeter. I really like long lenses. And I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. Now to ensure that your can is always in focus, we're going to go to our focus settings here. We're gonna change the mode from manual to tracking. And in tracking, I'm going to say, always track the SM Soda Can Actor. That way, no matter where my camera moves, it's always in focus. Now we're going to add some physical light into the scene because you shouldn't use just emissive light cards, right? So we're gonna put a rectangular light actor here, point it towards the can, and I'm just going to make it the size of the plane we put in here. So 175 uh, for both of these, and we're just going to soften this up a little bit like so. Put it behind the card here, and I'm just gonna change the color now to roughly more or less, you know, eyeball the blue here. Now. In our second light, I'm gonna show you what you do when you don't want to eyeball. So let's say you want the exact orange as the plane there, right? I'm just gonna put this light here. Click on the plane, uh, head over to the material, and you're looking for the color attribute. Now you can copy this code, click OK, and then go back to your light. And then in the color here, you can actually just paste the code in here so you get exactly the same orange or yellow. Now we're going to once again make another copy for the light above. So I'm just gonna put this roughly about here. And I'm also gonna go ahead and make this light a little wider, right? So it can match the emissive card that we placed. So let's go ahead and change this value. Oops, wrong value. Let's reset this and make the height value a little bit wider. That looks okay. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that looks a lot better. We're also gonna go ahead and change the color of this light to white. So just take the saturation all the way down. Now I'm gonna view the scene from my camera. So just select the camera here. And you can see what it looks like to have physical lights and emissive light cards. I'm just gonna to toggle them on and off here. I think I'm gonna make my lights a little dimmer. So we change this to one CD, one candela, all three of them. And we're going to go ahead and fix our exposure. To do this, you add a post-process volume. So under the Place Actors panel, search for post-process. And in case you've gone and lost this panel, you can always add it like this. So search a post-process volume and drag and drop the post-process volume into your scene. Reset its position and search for infinite extent. You want to enable the setting. This will let the post-process volume affect the entire level. Now unfold exposure and set it to manual and then set the exposure compensation to 10. You'll notice that the scene looks a little softer and a little bit more balanced. Okay, so next let's orient the scan 
a little bit back like this. Actually, I'm going to undo this and put snapping on. I want it 30 degrees tilted backwards, just so it gets that nice white light. Let's also yaw it. So we get a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the white light, and also push it back a little bit so it gets a little bit more of that cast on top there, like this. Next, I'm going to select my can, and in the motion design outline, I click on these four arrows over here. This is gonna create a null object for it. F2 to rename the CTRL can, and then with it selected, I'm going to add it to the sequencer like this. I'm also going to add our static mesh for the soda can to the sequencer the same way, but I have to add a transform track for our control like this. Now I'm gonna set our sequence FPS to 60 FPS and set our working range to 350 frames. Now to set the end of our sequence to 300, I can click on this gear and dial in 300 here. I can also do this by moving the playback head to 300 or dialing it on the bottom left here. Set to 300, right click and just choose set end time. But I like to be more specific, so I dial it in over here. Next, let's set our frame to 60. And then I'm going to go over to the transform and unfold it on our control. On our location, I'm gonna add a keyframe and then go back to frame zero. Let's move our control, which has the can as a child, all the way down, because we want our can to come up. And then we're going to set a keyframe over here. Now I'm gonna select the first keyframe and you get this new curve editor. Choose exponential and you can see the can kind of zooms up it kind of starts really fast and then slows down like this. Next, let's add our rotation keyframes. I'm gonna add a keyframe at frame zero and a keyframe at frame 300 like this. All right, so now with our keyframes added, let's unfold this and delete the X and Y keyframes. You don't need them. Now select your first your keyframe and type 360. So we're starting at 360 and we're ending at zero. This is a full rotation like this. Now I'd like my rotation to start fast and end slow. So select the first keyframe and click on this button to open the curve editor. Now on your control can unfold rotation and click on yaw. I'm just gonna actually check if roll and pitch have any keyframes on them. Seems pretty good. Click on yaw, select the first keyframe, right click and choose weighted tangents. Now you can kind of ensure that this starts fast and then eases into that final position like this. Let's close this and let's see what that looks like. Let's press play. You can see we're starting really fast and then we're slowly easing into that final position. For the text, I'm going to add a text actor from the Motion Graphic Actors panel. Let's go and reset its rotation and position and also turn it around so the text is facing the right way. I'm going to change what the text says to it's unreal, because why not, right? And then also enforce an uppercase. We change the font to a font that I like. You can use your own. We're also going to center align this text so that when we scale it, we can get the size perfect. I'm gonna put this right behind my can and we'll also click on our camera and pin the camera view so we can see what the camera sees, right? So we'll get this right up behind our can because we want the white of the text to kind of reflect off the can material, right? So I'm just gonna scale this. Let's actually go and view it from the perspective of our camera, put it in the center almost. And then I'm just gonna scale this just that it fills the area behind the camera. All right, with that done, we're going to add our text to our sequence just like we did before. And I'm going to add this actor hidden in game track here. Now let's go to frame 120, which is two seconds and keyframe, and then go to frame 119 and turn this off. So our visibility of this actor comes on at frame 120, like this. Now let's also animate the kerning. You can keyframe any property by clicking on this diamond, right? So we're just gonna go ahead and go over to frame roughly about maybe 240, six fours at 24. I'm just gonna add a keyframe here, so zero kerning. We're gonna go back to 120 and then just take this down, maybe I think negative five should be okay. Add a keyframe, like so. And if I play, you can see that the kerning increases, kind of like, you know what you see in the uh, motion graphic commercials. Now I do want this to be a little faster. Let's see what that looks like. And I also want it to start fast, right? So I'm just gonna get this um, keyframe here, the last keyframe on the kerning, this one right here. We right click and choose weighted tangents like we did before. I'm just gonna drag this handle to the left here like this. So it starts slow and then it just zooms in to its animation, right? Let's close this and see what that looks like. There we go. To render this out, add your camera the same way to the sequence and then click on this clapper over here. You can click on unsaved config to set up your render settings. When you're done, simply click render local. If you like this tutorial, please let us know in the comments, drop us a sub. And if you'd like to support the channel, we've added information about that in the description for this video. This really helps us make better videos and supports the channel as well. Any support is appreciated. 
and it goes a long way. With that said, thank you everyone. See you in the next one.